Feel the power. Welcome to Righteous Invasion of Truth with Dr. Abel Damina. Welcome to the ever increasing word feast right here on Facebook or YouTube, whichever social media platform you're watching from today. Abel Damina is my name. There is a mandate of God on my life to reintroduce Jesus to this generation, equipping the believer to know who you are in Christ, what you have in Christ, and what Christ can do through you. That's what this broadcast is all about today. So get ready to unlearn so you can relearn the truths concerning the gospel of Jesus Christ. Let me also advise you in the course of teaching, certain questions may arise. Just be patient, pay attention, and listen carefully because scriptures will interpret scriptures as you patiently follow the teaching of God's word. You know, the Bible tells us that the time shall come when people shall not endure sound doctrine. So sound doctrine is to be endured. So endure. You know, the word of God also tells us that with meekness, you receive the engrafted word, which is able to save your soul with meekness. So there's a meekness required and there's endurance required where sound doctrine is concerned. So as the teaching of God's word begins to come, get your notebook, get your pen, follow the teachings. Most of my teachings are in a series because we take time to holistically look at subject matters in the light of Jesus Christ. Let me encourage those of you that are connecting for the first time today, get ready to keep following. We are right here on Facebook and YouTube every day. We're here at 12 noon, GMT plus one. We're here at 6 p.m. We're here at 10 p.m. Also, we are here every day at 10 a.m. GMT plus one, every day. You don't want to miss any of them because all of these times that I've mentioned, they are designed to equip you with sound knowledge of Jesus Christ. In the midst of a world of uncertainties, with all kinds of messages of fear going all over, you need to stock up, you need to feed yourself with the truth of the gospel so you're rooted and grounded and not moved to and fro with every wind of doctrine. Two more things to introduce to you today. If you are in a city where there is no church, Christ-centered church, where they teach the message of Christ, it is not good for you to be in isolation. The Bible says God has set the solitary in families. God wants you to be a part of a local assembly, a gathering of believers where you can pray together, learn the word of God together, and effectively serve one another and go out to the world and bring the gospel of Christ. If you want to join any of our campuses around the world today, or you want to start one in your own locality and be the lighthouse in that community, all you need to do is shoot me a mail today telling me about your desire to either be a part of a campus or to start one with your location and your phone number. We will get in touch with you and help you either begin one or identify with an existing one. The last thing is I have a lot of books, like you can see them displayed on the screen. All of these are resources written painstakingly to equip you, answer your questions, and bring you clarity of explanation of the Word of God. And if you want to order for any or all of the books today, all you need to do again is shoot email to Dr. Abel Damina at yahoo.com and we'll respond to you properly and give you all the information you require to acquire these books. I'm excited, very excited. Invite a friend, tag somebody, create a watch party, but today is going to be a powerful time of teaching you the word of his grace. Fasten your seatbelts as I take you on a gospel adventure into a service where the spirit of our God is already moving. Happy viewing. The father and his family. Matthew chapter 16 verse number 13. And when Jesus came into the coast of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples saying, Whom do men say that I, the son of man, am? Look at verse 15. He said unto them, But whom say ye that I am 16 and Simon Peter answered and said thou art the Christ the son of the living God and Jesus answered and said unto him blessed art thou Simon Bajona for flesh and blood hath not revealed it unto thee but my father which is in heaven verse 18 and I say also unto thee that thou art Peter and upon this rock I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Verse 19. And I will give unto thee the keys of the kingdom of heaven. And whatsoever thou shalt bind on earth 
shall be bound in heaven. And whatsoever thou shalt lose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. In the course of teaching, we have established that the father builds the family. The father builds the family. The father builds the church. It is the father alone that is at work. It is the father alone that walketh. And that the father's work is expressed in Christ. And in our family, it's so important for you to know that we have family business. Family business. Every responsible son ought to be involved in this family business. We have a business of the family. And every responsible son, you didn't hear that word, every responsible son ought to be involved in this business. It is something that all of us must do and we must, we must clearly define our priorities. We must clearly define our priorities. It's so important. You must know what is our family business and all of us are shareholders in this family business. Every believer. What is the business that we're all involved in? Ephesians chapter 4 verse 11. And he gave some apostles and some prophets and some evangelists and some pastors and teachers. The fourfold ministry. Why did he give them? For the perfecting of the saints. For the work of the ministry. For the edifying of the body of Christ. For the perfecting of the saints. The word perfecting is catastimos. It means to equip. To equip the saints or to make fit for the work of the ministry. To make fit for the work of the ministry. It also means that you are equipped, you are built up to be effective in the work of the ministry. For the perfecting of the saints to do the work of the ministry. All saints ought to be involved in the work of the ministry. Any saint that is not involved in the work of the ministry is either not a believer or he's an irresponsible saint. Simple. All saints for the perfecting of the saints, not some of the saints, for the perfecting of all the saints, so that the saints can do the work of the ministry and that for the edifying of the body of Christ. In other words, the fruit of ministry is ministry. The fruit of ministry is ministry. The church has a mission of producing ministers. The church does not have a mission of producing entrepreneurs. The church does not have a mission of producing commerce. The church has a mission of producing ministers. For the perfecting of the saints to do. To do the work of ministry. For the equipping, the training of the saints. For the training of the saints. Take down three words. Number one, training. Number one, training. Number two, evangelism. And number three, discipleship. God's machinery for the production of sons is evangelism. There is no other way children are born into the kingdom outside evangelism. Evangelism is God's method of birthing children into the kingdom. How can they believe on whom they have not heard? How can they hear without a preacher? Brother Isaiah said, but they have not believed our report. Then brother Paul answered Isaiah, faith by hearing. Faith by hearing. Hearing by the word of God. How can they hear without a preacher? So the work of evangelism is our collective responsibility. It's not just for some few people in the church. And we're going to be very massive with it this year. We are going to cover every man's world with the good news of the gospel of Christ. And there's going to be a mass production of sons into the kingdom. I didn't hear powerful amen. You know, so the local church ought to be producing fourfold ministry gifts all the time for the perfecting of the saints to do the work of ministry. Matthew 28 verse number 18. And Jesus came and spake unto them saying, all power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Go ye, that is a place to underline. Go ye, it's not for a selected few. Go ye, therefore, and teach all nations. 
and teach. That word teach is disciple. Go ye therefore and disciple all nations. Go and teach all nations. Baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. Teaching them to observe all things. Whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. So, all authority is given to Jesus, and he turns back and says, I give it to you. Meaning that the reason for the authority of the believer is for the gospel. The reason for the authority of the believer is for the gospel. It's not for you to make it in life. It is for the preaching of the gospel. Luke chapter 24 verse 47. And that repentance and remission of sins should be preached in his name among all nations. Repentance and remission of sins should be preached in his name. In his authority. The name is the authority of Jesus. What Jesus has accomplished. That repentance and the remission of sins should be preached in his authority. The authority of the believer is for preaching. It's not for harassing demons in the village. It's for preaching the gospel. Look at John 20, 23. Whosoever sins you remit, they are remitted unto them. And whosoever sins you retain, they are retained. How do we remit people's sins? And how do we retain people's sins? When we preach the gospel, it is the gospel of the forgiveness of sins. When we preach the gospel, we forgive people's sins. When we do not preach the gospel, we retain their sins. So the preaching of the gospel is a family business that all of us ought to be involved in. Whoever sins you forgive, they are forgiven. Whoever sins you retain, they are retained. That is what the authority of the believer is for. That is what the authority of the believer is for. And this is consistent. This is consistent. Once a church is not involved with the salvation of souls, it becomes a mere organization. Once a church is not involved with the salvation of souls, it becomes a mere organization. And I know a lot of people are going to throw tantrums at that. It becomes a mere organization. But that is the truth. That is the truth. The authority of Jesus given to the church is for evangelism. All authority is given unto me. Go ye therefore and teach all nations. The authority is for discipleship. The authority is for evangelism. The authority is for soul winning. That is why you have been given authority as a believer. In the book of Ephesians, where he says, Be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God, that you may be able to stand in the evil day. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood. The wrestling is to resist the forces of darkness that try to hinder men from coming to the glorious light of the gospel of Jesus Christ. The word wrestle, like we said, is the word resist. That's why among the armor is the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. Shodding your feet with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Blessed are the feet that bring it good tidings. So the preaching of the gospel is so important. That's why in that same Ephesians chapter 6, Brother Paul said, praying for all saints. And he says, pray for me that utterance may be given to me. To make known the mystery of the gospel. So it was for the preaching of the gospel. The authority of the believer. Look at 2 Corinthians chapter 10 verse 3. For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. Next verse. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. Pulling down of strongholds. What are these strongholds? Casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalted itself against the knowledge of God. This is unbelievers. This is among sinners. They are thoughts that oppose the gospel. So what do we do? Through preaching, we bring into captivity every thought to obedience of Christ. That is, we bring men to salvation. Through the preaching of the gospel. It's the same thing Brother Paul was speaking to the church at Corinth that he spoke to the church at Ephesus. 
bringing down, casting down imagination. The tool for casting down imagination is the preaching of the gospel. The preaching of the gospel is a tool for bringing down every thought to the obedience of Christ among those that don't believe. So the stronghold is in men. The stronghold is in men. And we preach to cast down that stronghold in their minds so they can receive the gospel and so their sins can be forgiven. Look at 2 Corinthians chapter 2 verse 14. Now, thanks be unto God, which always causeth us to triumph in Christ and make it manifest the savor of his knowledge by us in every place. It's not talking about anything material. He is talking about the preaching of the gospel. He always causes us to triumph in the preaching of the gospel and make it manifest the savor of his knowledge by us. Make it manifest the savor of his knowledge by us in every place. How do we know it's the preaching of the gospel for more clarity? Look at verse 12 of the same chapter. Furthermore, when I came to trust to preach Christ's gospel, and a door was opened unto me of the Lord, preaching, 13, I had no rest in my spirit because I found no titles, my brother. But taking my leave of them, I went from thence into Macedonia. Next verse. Now, thanks be unto God, which always causes us to triumph in Christ. So, in the preaching of the gospel, we triumphed. We triumphed. In the midst of opposition, the gospel of Christ thrived. In the midst of resistance, the message of Christ thrived. Just like we can see all over the world right now, the message is thriving. People are waking up to the reality of the finished work of Christ. A lot of people are free from the tohungas of the law, tohungas of mental slavery. They are coming into the glorious liberty of sons. Can somebody shout hallelujah? So it's a triumphant train when you are displaying the victory of war. Look at verse 15 of that same chapter. For we are unto God a sweet savor of Christ in them that are saved and in them that perish. We are a sweet savor. To the one, we are the savor of death unto death. And to the other, the savor of life unto life. And who is sufficient for these things? He's talking about evangelism. He's talking about the preaching of the gospel. We manifest the savor of his knowledge by preaching the gospel. We manifest the savor of his knowledge by preaching the gospel. So it's important we realize that the primary reason why we were given authority is for more people to be saved. Is for more people to be saved. You have been delivered from the bondage of sin. But it's not freedom for you. You are freed from sin to be a slave to righteousness. So it's not just freedom. Mm -mm. He said, use not your liberty as an occasion for the flesh to gratify his desires. But by love, serve one another. So the liberty is for service you are liberated from sin you are a born slave of righteousness so it's not like i am free i am free so now i can do what i want to do i can go where i want to go i can do what i want to do with my time no you are freed from slavery to sin and satan you are now a slave of righteousness the law of life in Christ Jesus has set me free from the law of sin and death. So I am free from sin and death. I am bound to life in Christ. Out of one into another. He freed you from to himself. He freed you from one to himself. You are now a servant of righteousness. You are now a servant of righteousness. Brother Paul said, but God be thanked that once you were a servant of sin, but now you are a servant of righteousness. Say with me very loud, I am a servant of righteousness. I am a master over sin. Say it very loud, I am a servant of righteousness. 
I am a master over sin. Can I hear a powerful amen? So every time he mentioned the name of Jesus, he is talking about salvation. So the believer's authority is primarily for the preaching of the gospel. In the book of Acts, when they mentioned the name of Jesus, it was connected to preaching. Look at Acts 2.21. Let's take a few of them. And it shall come to pass that whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Whosoever shall call on the authority of the Lord shall be saved. Acts chapter 3 verse 6. Then Peter said, silver and gold have I none, but such as I have I give thee. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. Now that same context, look at verse 16 of Acts chapter 3. And his name, his authority, through faith in his name, hath made this man strong, whom you see and know. Yea, the faith which is by him had given him this perfect soundness in the presence of you all. Talking about the lame man at the gate beautiful. So wherever the name was mentioned in the book of Acts, it had to do with salvation. Look at Acts chapter 4 verse 12. Neither is there salvation in any other for there is none other name, none other authority under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. So the name of Jesus, the authority of Jesus, the accomplishment of Jesus is for salvation. Why did he come? To save his people from their sins. So his accomplishment will be for salvation. Acts chapter 4 verse 14. And beholding the man which was healed, standing with them, they could say nothing against him. The man which was healed, and he was healed in the name of Jesus. They could say nothing against him. Acts chapter 4 verse 18. And they called them and commanded them not to speak at all, nor teach in the name of Jesus. So the persecution was that the name of Jesus was used for salvation. They commanded them not to teach or preach in the authority of Jesus. In the authority of Jesus. And Peter said, we must obey God rather than men. We must obey God. You cannot stop the gospel. You cannot stop the gospel. Oh, falsehood will collapse like a pack of cards in the face of the gospel of Christ. Religion will collapse like a pack of cards in the face of the gospel of Christ. Another gospel is collapsing by the day like a pack of cards in the face of the gospel of Christ. Ladies and gentlemen, you can do nothing against the truth but for the truth. The age of a lie does not intimidate the truth. The truth alone sets men men free. You shall know the truth and the truth shall set free. We preach the truth and we allow the truth to do what only the truth knows how to do. And what does the truth know how to do? To set men free. Brother Paul said, necessity is laid on me and woe is me if I preach not the gospel. That is a member of the family. The necessity Woe is me if I preach not the gospel. Look at Acts chapter 5 verse 28. Saying, did not we strictly command you that you should not teach in this name? And behold, you have filled Jerusalem with your doctrine. And intend to bring this man's blood upon us. So the name of Jesus was a teaching. It was a teaching. It's primarily for the advancement of the cause of Christ. The name of Jesus is primarily for the advancement of the cause of the gospel. That's why he died and rose from the dead. That's why Jesus is seated at the right hand of the Father. So today, we sit in that name. We sit in that name. We sit in that name. We sit in that authority. We sit in that finished walk. We are in that name. 
It's not how many times you call the name. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. No, it is knowing what the name is to you. The name is not a label. The name is an accomplished work. And I am in that work. That name is our family name. Somebody shout hallelujah. We are seated in him. We are seated in Christ. The name of Jesus is our confession of faith. We confess the name of Jesus. In other words, the name of Jesus is our authority. The name of Jesus is what we are. The name of Jesus is where we are. Look at Hebrews chapter 13 verse 15. By him therefore... Let us offer the sacrifice of praise to God continually. That is the fruit of our lips. Giving thanks to his name. That word giving thanks to his name means confessing his name. Confessing his name. So the golden question is, how do we walk in this reality? How do we walk in this reality? Imagine a Bible that has only nouns without verbs. A Bible that has only nouns without verbs. So there are verbs, active words in scripture. In other words, the name of Jesus creates activity for us on the earth. The name of Jesus creates activity for us on the earth. Remember, there's a glory of the incarnation. And there's a glory of his death, burial, resurrection, and ascension to the right hand of the Father. So what did Jesus do? How did he walk in his name in the four Gospels? Something happened and Jesus took note of it. In Matthew chapter 8 verse 6. And saying, Lord, my servant lieth at home sick of the palsy, grievously tormented. Verse 7. And Jesus saith unto him, I will come and heal him. Verse 8. The centurion answered and said, Lord, I am not worthy that thou shouldest come under my roof. But speak the word only. That's a place to underline. But speak the word only. And my servant shall be healed. But speak the word only. And my servant shall be healed. Next verse. For I am a man under authority, having soldiers under me. And I say to this man, go, and he goeth. And to another, come, and he cometh. And to my servant, do this, and he doeth it. Verse 10. When Jesus heard it, he marveled and said to them that followed, Verily I say unto you, I have not found so great faith, no not in Israel. The man said something about Jesus that people might never notice. That is, the way you exercise authority is by words. The way you exercise authority is by words. That is the way you do it. The man noted, and Jesus said unto that man, I have not found so great faith. Jesus compared the man's understanding of using words to faith. The man's understanding of using words. Jesus called that great faith. Using words. Alright? Remember, Matthew 16, 18 to 19. What thing, whatsoever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven whatsoever you lose on earth shall be loose in heaven i give you the keys of the kingdom so bind on earth bound in heaven bind on earth first so earth control heaven's actions earth controls heaven's action bind on earth bound in heaven whoever sins you forgive forgive him whoever sins you retain retained loose on earth loose in heaven so the totality of god's authority is on earth where men are 
the totality of God's authority is on earth where men are. In other words, we use this authority. We use it. We didn't keep it in the house for decoration. We use the authority. It is our reality. We walk in this reality. And this man here is showing us how Jesus used this authority. Remember, it was after this man finished speaking in Matthew 8, 16. When the evening was come, they brought unto him many that were possessed with devils. And he cast out the spirits with his word. Your presence will do nothing without your words. Don't come to my house. If you come to my house and you don't speak, it's as if you never came. So you coming to my house is not necessary. Speak the word. That is what I need from you. I don't need your physical presence. Because your physical presence is not the authority. The authority is in your speaking. Don't tell Satan. Can't you see I have arrived? Mm -mm. You have arrived. Even Jesus arrived. Jesus arrived. And Satan said to Jesus. Come here. If you are the son of God. No fear. Satan looked at Jesus. He said who is even sure whether you are the son of God. Sir? Who is sure? Look, in chapter 3, Satan heard when the heavens opened. In chapter 3 of Matthew, he heard when the heavens opened and the voice came out of heaven. This is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. Satan heard it. Then he came in chapter 4. He came in chapter 4 of the same Matthew and said, if you are the son of God, he threw doubt on Jesus' identity. To see if Jesus understood what that voice said. If you are the son of God. Command these stones to be made bread. Jesus said if is not a matter for discourse. We won't even address if. Because me and you know. That that is who I am. See you don't have to prove to Satan that you are a son of God. No no you don't. That's who you are. It's like me trying to prove I'm a man. I don't have to prove it because I know I am. When you know you are something, you don't prove a point. You only prove what you yourself don't believe in. He didn't answer if. He just said, man shall not live by bread alone. Let's deal with the bread. Live if. Man shall not live by bread alone. But by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. Jesus didn't tell him, don't you know who I am? I'm Jesus Christ. You don't talk to me like that. I was born by Virgin Mary. Even my father Joe was not involved in my appearance. No, who cares? Authority is in words. It is written, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. That was not enough for Sita. He said, okay, come. Fall down from the mountain, for it is written, since you have gone to it is written let us be written it it is written he shall give his angels charge over you to keep you in all your ways Jesus answered and said to him it is also written thou shalt not tempt the Lord your God him only shall you serve get thee behind me Satan get thee behind me in my name you shall cast out demons get thee behind me the negotiation is over. You are a believer and the devil is talking to you and you are quoting village proverbs. <laughs> Heaven help those that help themselves. You are finished. The authority of the believer is not just available. It is necessary. And the authority of the believer is exercised by the use of words. Mark eleven fourteen, And Jesus answered and said unto it. No man eat fruit of thee hereafter forever. And his disciples heard it. You exercise authority by speaking. His disciples heard it. And after three days. On their way back. The tree had dried up. 
verse 20 of Mark 11. And in the morning, as they passed by, they saw the fig tree dried off from the roots. Next verse. And Peter, calling to remembrance, said unto him, Master, behold, the fig tree which thou causest is withered away. And Jesus answering said unto them, Have faith in God. That is how to dry up trees. Have faith in God. That is how to destroy cancers. Have faith in God. That is how to heal ulcers. Have faith in God. That is how to flush out opposition against the gospel. That word have faith in God is the same word for have the faith that God gives. Have the faith that God gives. Now, when he spoke to them to have faith, he had not died. So if he was talking to us today, he would not tell us have faith in God. Because we already are in the faith. We are born of faith. So we are in the faith, but now he didn't stop at have faith in God. He now showed how faith operates. Next verse. For verily I say unto you, that whosoever shall say unto this mountain, Be thou removed, and be thou cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he saith shall come to pass, he shall have whatsoever he saith. Say, saith, saith. Say three times, believe one time. You believe one time. You're already a believer. What is the next thing? Say, say, say. Somebody said to me, Dr. Damina, I prayed for somebody one time. He didn't get healed. I said, pray again. There are some people you have to pray for five times. Jesus prayed for a blind man two times. He prayed the first time. After I finish, he said, are you seeing? He said, I see men as trees. He said, no, you have not started seeing. If you are seeing men as trees, you are not seeing yet. Close your eye. He prayed another one. He said, now can you see? The man says, yes, I can see very well. So don't stop praying as long as the man is still seeing trees. You pray again. You speak to that situation. If the situation is not moving, you keep speaking. You keep speaking. Somebody say, if you speak two times, it's unbelief. No, it's not unbelief. It is standing in the faith and putting up the resistance. You didn't hear what I said. It is standing in the faith and putting up a resistance until the answer is in your hand. You resist him steadfastly where? In the faith. You stay in the faith and put up that resistance until the answer shows up. I declare this is your year of answers. Amen. Somebody shout, I have this answers. Shout it very loud, I have this answers. I didn't hear a powerful amen. amen. You shall say, you shall have. You shall say, you shall have. Jesus was explaining how he uses authority. In other words, Jesus is saying, authority is dormant if it is not released with words. Authority is dormant if it is not released with words. The believer's authority is exercised with words. The believer's authority is exercised with words. You must say, you must say, words come from our lips so easily that you don't even pay attention to them. Jesus, what happened to the tree? There's no mysterious depth. I just spoke to it. Jesus, how did the tree dry up? There is no con concoction. I just spoke to it. You go around speaking through the year. Preach the gospel. And when you meet opposition, speak to it. Don't speak about it. 
Don't talk about it. Talk to it. Talk to it. When you speak, you release the authority of the finished work of Christ on that object. And you stay there. Keep that word on till you see the result. So the believer's authority is used by words. Did you notice Jesus always said who he was? Who the father was? What he could do? All the time. He spoke about his rights and privileges. You must dare to say what you have in Christ. You must dare to say what you have in Christ. You must dare to say what you have in Christ. Hebrews chapter 13 verse number 5. Let your conversation be without covetousness. And be content with such things as you have. For he has said, I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. He has said, he has said that I may boldly say, he has said that I may boldly say, I say what he has said. Say with me very loud. I say what God has said about me. Say it again. I say what God has said about me. I didn't hear powerful amen. Jesus said, I am the true vine. My father is a husband man. What do I say? I am the vine. My father is a husband man. So with me, I am in the vine. My father is a husband man. Say it like Jesus would say, I am in the vine. And my father is a husband man. Can I hear a powerful amen? Jesus said, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but he shall have the light of life. I say, I say, he has said that I may boldly say, I say, I am in the light. I do not walk in darkness. I have the light of life. He has said that I may boldly say, not that I may economically say, that I may boldly say, somebody say it again, I say, I am in Jesus. I do not walk in darkness. I have the light of light. Jesus said, I am the light of the world. What do you say? Jesus said, in that day, where I am, you will be also. Say with me very loud, I am where Jesus is. Right now. Where he is, I am. What he has, I have. What he can do, I can do. Jesus said, in my father's house are many mansions. The next time somebody says, God is building mansions. Tell him, I am one of those mansions. I have already been built. Glory to God. Tell him, my friend, get born again. Once you get born again, now you too will be one of the mansions. Oh, hallelujah. I said, oh, hallelujah. They are to say what God says about you. In spite of apparent opposition, in spite of circumstances and situation, in spite of how you feel, they are to say what God says about you. When it looks like things are opposing you, rise and say, things are working for me like never before. They are to say what God says. I am raised together with Christ. I have taught you how to respond in this church. I am raised together with Christ. I am seated in heaven right now. I am raised. I am quickened. I am seated together with Christ. All things are mine in Christ Jesus. Paul says you are the temple of the, of the Holy Ghost. What do you say? I am the temple of the Holy Ghost. You must dare to say who you are. You must dare to say what you have. The believer's authority is not just given to us. It is a necessity. And we exercise it by speaking.
Don't keep your mouth short through the course of the year. Make your mouth sharper than razor blade. You must dare to say what you have. It's mine. Whatever the father has is mine. Jesus kept saying, I and the father are one. I and the father. Are... Can I hear you say that three times? You must say it all the time. In 1 Corinthians chapter 1 verse 30. Glory to God. Oh, hallelujah. As many as are led by the spirit of God are the sons of God. I am led by the spirit of God. I thought you would say that. I am led by the spirit of God. I am a son of God. I am a son of God. You have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear. What do you say? I have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear. I have received the spirit of adoption. I have received the spirit of adoption. I have received the spirit of adoption. I have received. I cry. Abba Father, they are to say what God says about you. No bondage. I have the spirit of adoption. The Lord is my strength. The Lord is my life. The Lord is my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Zigadome ketena kayatana. The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid the Lord is my light and my salvation and the light shines in darkness and the darkness cannot comprehend it I fear no man I fear no man I fear no man the Lord is the strength of my life. I'm not afraid of what man can do to me. Man can do nothing to me. They shall surely gather. But they cannot prevail over you. With them is the arm of the flesh. With you is the Lord of hosts. Zeola Tanaha, greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. If God be for us, who can be against us? He that spared not his son, but freely gave him up for us all. How shall he not also with him freely give us all things? Somebody shout glory. See that and so me, he has said that I may boldly say so it becomes inoperative if I don't say it it becomes inoperative if I don't say it what he says has no effect on me till I say it myself what God has said about me remains ineffective on me till I say it myself in my walk in this earth I must put a verb to the noun. The noun says, I am the righteousness of God. The verb says very loud, I am the righteousness of God. I dare to say what he says. He said in 2 Corinthians 6, 14, you are Christ. I am Christ. Be ye not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. For what fellowship hath righteousness with unrighteousness? He calls me righteousness. What, what do you say? What do you say? What do you say? He has said that I may boldly say, I am an. For what fellowship has righteousness with unrighteousness? And what communion has light with darkness? Verse 15. And what concord has Christ with Belial? Or what part hath he that believeth with an infidel? Glory. Glory. I am Christ. I am light. I am righteousness. I am the temple of God. I must dare to say what God says. What is written is for you to have it. Look around and shout it very loud. I do not walk in darkness. I have the light of life. I am far from confusion. I cannot be confounded. I cannot be dumbfounded. Don't say, the Lord say, I cannot be confounded. Mm -mm. 
say it as a matter of reality i cannot be dumbfounded i cannot be confounded i am far from confusion i walk in the light i am not confused i don't do trial and error i have accuracy i have exactness i have precision my steps are ordered by the lord i am in the right place at the right time doing the right thing everything works for me it may not be working for others but the moment i arrive is the time when it will start working i have the gift of on time so in the name of jesus my steps are timed by the spirit of god i have the gift of arriving on time say i have the gift of on time my steps are ordered by the lord in all these things i am more than a conqueror shout it very loud i am washed i am sanctified i am justified i am in authority shout glory i am what the word says i am In 1 Corinthians 1.30, Jesus is made unto us righteousness, sanctification. He is made unto us wisdom. Our songs ought to be our confession. Our songs should not be pouring our heart to God. We are not Israelites. Our songs ought to be our confession. We ought to sing the things he has said about us. I am righteous. I am holy. I am sanctified. I am justified. I have right standing with God. Yeah, we ought to say what God says about us. He has said that I may boldly say, the Lord is my helper. I shall not be afraid what man can do to me. I shall not be afraid. Even when men gather, they fall. They fall. The moment they gather and mention my name, that's the end of that conference. From the moment they call my name, their mendula or blangata, their reasoning faculty would start rewinding. They shall not be able to see eye to eye. And they shall not be able to execute the enterprise of their hands. Zabayana Gada. Zabayana Gada. Zabayana Mada. I am a mystery to every devil. I'm a mystery to every devil. When the devil thinks I am coming, that is when I am going backward. When the devil thinks I am coming from the front, I arrive from the back. This year, you will take the devil by surprise. At every turn, you will take the devil by surprise. Somebody shout, I declare. I am not afraid what man can do to me. The Lord is my helper. I receive the help of God. I receive the help of God. I receive the help of God in the leading of the Holy Ghost. Honey, you know the help of God is the leading of the Spirit. The help of God is the leading of the spirit. When the spirit is telling you go, that is God helping you. Yes. When the spirit is saying stop, that is God helping you. So the help of God is in the leading of the spirit. So this year you must yield to the spirit. You must yield to the spirit at all times. Pray in the spirit and listen and yield. And when you yield, the spirit will carry you. When you yield, the spirit will carry you. There are some appointments you disappoint. You disappoint and reappoint yourself. That is, they gave you appointment for today, 4 o'clock. You arrive next Monday, 4 o'clock. And when you arrive, you discover that your arrival next Monday was the right time to arrive. Say, I have the gift of on time. Everything is working of his own accord. Your steps are ordered by the Lord. This year you will experience victory like never before. You will experience victory like never before. You will enjoy redemption's realities. And you will function in total triumph. Somebody's not shouting that amen. amen. You must glory. You must glory in the Lord. In 1 Corinthians 1.29, look at it. 
that no flesh should glory in his presence. 30. But of him are ye in Christ Jesus, who of God is made unto us wisdom and righteousness and sanctification and redemption. Look at the next verse. That according as it is written, he that glorieth, let him glory in the Lord. Somebody shout, I glory in the Lord. How do you glory in the Lord? By talking. By saying. The doctor says, ah, your blood pressure has gone high. Say, no, sir. No, sir. It's two of us that measured it. Divide by two. It is very normal. I cannot have high blood pressure. Where is the pressure coming from? How can a man in rest be under pressure? No, I cannot have high blood pressure. I cannot have sugar diabetes. God giveth me all things richly to enjoy. I cannot be enjoying what God has given me and have diabetes. I cannot have it. Say, I create my world with my word. I create my world. With my words. I say I have been crucified with Christ. John Wesley said. There's something the devil has given to the church. It looks like faith. But it is a mental ascent. It looks like faith. Mental ascent is when you see the truth. And fail to acknowledge it. By his stripes you are healed. You are still saying my sickness. It's a seasonal sickness then it will stop like locomotive engine on your head on your head locomotive engine <laughs> on your head in all my years on earth I have never seen locomotive engine moving on a head it has its own tracks built by government don't say what you feel Say what God says. Say, let's be realistic. My temperature is high. That cannot solve it. You touch your body and say, my body is at rest. My temperature is normal. My body is functioning well. And the healing power of God is working in my body. You are not denying the fact that there's pressure, but you are telling your body how it ought to function. You are acknowledging your realities. Look, listen carefully. They say when you start reaching the age of 40, 50, you start using glasses. That's not in the Bible. That's not in the Bible. Don't let anybody put glasses in your eyes. You stay with the word of God. At the age of 80, Moses' eyesight was still very sharp. Under the old covenant. Under the old covenant. At 80. And his natural force. Was still intact. Hey. 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 Say it the way you want to have it. You didn't hear what I said. Say it the way you want to have it. The power is in your mouth. The power is in your mouth. Preaching the gospel is part of glorying in Christ. So we give ourselves to ministry. Somebody say that with me. Say I give myself to ministry. I win souls. I preach the gospel without compromise. I didn't hear your amen. amen. Hebrews 13 verse 5. Let your conversation be without covetousness. And be content with such things as you have. For he has said... I will never leave thee, nor forsake thee. Never. I will never leave thee. I will never forsake you. Colossians chapter 1 verse 9. For this cause we also, since the day we heard it, do not cease to pray for you and to desire that you might be filled with the knowledge of his will in all wisdom and spiritual understanding. Next verse. That ye might walk worthy of the Lord unto all pleasing, being fruitful in every good work and increasing in the knowledge of God. Say, I walk worthy of the Lord unto all pleasing. I am fruitful 
in every good work. Can I hear a powerful amen? amen? One of the vital truths about the New Testament is the laying on of hands. The laying on of hands. Romans chapter 1 verse 10. Making requests if by any means now at length I might have a prosperous journey by the will of God to come unto you. Verse 11. For I long to see you that I may impart unto you some spiritual gift to the end that ye may be established. 12. That is that I may be comforted together with you by the mutual faith both of you and me. That I may be comforted. That word to share or to impart means for you to receive of my ministry. For you to receive of my ministry. Is to partake. He was talking about the church partaking of his ministry. And this time around, it was not just instruction by teaching. It went beyond teaching to laying hands. Look at 1 Timothy chapter 4 verse 14. Neglect not the gift that is in thee, which was given thee by prophecy, with the laying on of the hands of the presbytery. So when hands are laid on you, something happens to you. 2 Timothy chapter 1 verse 6. Wherefore, I put thee in remembrance, that thou stir up the gift of God, which is in thee, by the putting on of my hands. The laying on of hands is a very vital New Testament ministry. The laying on of hands. In Acts chapter 13 verse 1. Now there were in the church that was at Antioch. Certain prophets and teachers. As Barnabas and Simeon that was called Niger and Lucius of Cyrene. And Manian which had been brought up with Herod the Tetrarch and Saul. Verse 2. As they ministered to the Lord. And fasted, the Holy Ghost said, Separate me, Barnabas and Saul, for the work whereunto I have called them. Who said? The Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost said, Why didn't the Holy Ghost say, I have separated Paul and Barnabas? Why didn't the Holy Ghost said, I, I, I am the Holy Ghost. I have separated Paul and Barnabas. But the Holy Ghost said, You separate. You separate Paul and Barnabas. I long to see you that I may impart spiritual gifts. Now watch what happened. The Holy Ghost has just spoken. Look at the next verse. And when they had fasted and prayed and laid hands on them, they sent them away. In Acts chapter 19, Brother Paul said to them, have you received the Holy Ghost since you believe? They said, we have never heard if there be anything like the Holy Ghost. The Bible says, and they laid hands on them. And they began to speak in tongues and prophesy. They laid hands on them. And they began to speak in tongues and prophesy. When I lay hands on you, there are things that have been sitting on your inside that will come alive. Things will just rise. Things will just wake up from your inside. You will suddenly see certain abilities showing themselves through you. I'm not hearing the powerful name. Certain abilities inside you will come alive. When hands are laid on you, you must be in the spirit. And you must respond. How do we respond? We respond by praying in the spirit. We respond by singing in the spirit. And we respond by rejoicing in the spirit. So when hands are laid on you, Jesus was praying when John the Baptist baptized him. Even something like water baptism, Jesus was praying. Jesus was praying because he was under John's ministry. And what John was doing was baptism. Yet, even for water baptism that Jesus knew it did not have any eternal value, he was praying. The Bible says he entered the water praying because spiritual things are received in the spirit. You can't come to me in the flesh to receive spiritual things. I'm laying hands on you, you're looking at me. You're looking at me. Waiting for magic. No. It is mutual faith. It is me and you. As we participate, then a steering happens. So you come to me, you are in the spirit. So hands are laid on you and a spiritual transaction takes place. 
what you have not been able to do for 10 years the spirit of god will grant you such unusual access and favor if you stand up and shout that amen it's happening right now i say it's happening right now i say it's happening right now i say it's happening right now welcome back ladies and gentlemen welcome back oh my goodness what a service what a time of learning a time of unlearning and a time of relearning the word of his grace brother paul says i commend you to god and to the word of his grace which is able to build you up and give you your inheritance among the sanctified the word has come with clarity please don't go away if there's anything that was wrong in your life the word of god has gone forth to fix it i rebuke sickness i rebuke pain I rebuke confusion. I rebuke discomfort. Now, receive healing. Receive a miracle where you need one today. In the name of Jesus, receive a miracle. I clear every confusion out of your life. We rebuke fear and the hold of darkness is broken in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. I'm excited. Now, listen very carefully. I want to encourage you. I have a lot of books like you can see them displayed on the screen. All of these are resources written painstakingly to equip you, answer your questions, and bring you clarity of explanation of the Word of God. Shoot email to Dr. Abel Damina at yahoo.com and we'll respond to you properly and give you all the information you require to acquire these books. You can order them from our office, either the books, the CDs, or the DVDs, Dr. Abel Damina at yahoo.com. Shoot us a mail today with your orders and we will ensure that we reach out to you today. If you're in a city where there's no church, where the message of Christ like this is preached or taught, that is already an opportunity for you to serve Jesus by getting involved with ministry. This is the way it works. All you need to do is shoot us a mail. We will take time and equip you and prepare you to begin an extension of our church ministry called a campus, where other believers in your locality can assemble with you in your own venue and learn together with you the message, pray with you, and together all of you can reach out to more people with the truth of the gospel. Or you're in a place where you desire to just belong to the campus, shoot us a mail with your location today. We'll connect you to the nearest campus to where you are of our ministry. It's always a joy to serve you the grace of God. Always a joy to bring you clarity, to equip you, to build you up in the knowledge of Christ. I'm excited today, looking forward to hearing from every one of you today. And don't forget to stay tuned for the next broadcast that comes up in a few hours from now. Share with people about what God is doing on this platform. And until we connect with you again, enjoy the grace of Christ and be blessed. Amen. Amen to your victory station.